There are many 2D games on the Nintendo Switch, in fact, loads of them. Games like Inside, Spelunky, Axiom Verge, Dead Cells and Bloodstained are all available in Nintendo's eShop and they have mostly received positive reviews. Every time a new 2D game is released, I wonder what will be unique this time. What will be different? It must be quite difficult to create something special in a game genre that is extremely saturated. The next game out is Blood Rain Betrayal Fresh Bites, a remake of Blood Rain Betrayal released in 2011. The enhanced version just got released on Nintendo Switch and the question is whether the game keeps the same quality as other 2D games. Is it unique enough to be worth buying? The game cost 20 bucks and can be described as a hack and slash adventure game. But why did the developer way forward choose to do a remake of this game. They have said in interviews that the legion of fans simply never went away. They are as passionate today about Rain as they were back in 2002. Actually even more so. In the beginning you can choose between standard and classic difficulty. Classic difficulty should be significantly more difficult than standard. With that said, standard difficulty is not equal to easy mode. Getting through the game is still a challenge. However, some modifications have been made. You play as the character Rain, and her damage and health have been adjusted so that the game becomes a little more forgiving. In addition, some challenges have become easier, such as the fact that some buff-offs have had her speed reduced. Changes that will make it a little easier for the player, even though the game has been modified, it is not easy. You have to keep your concentration up, otherwise you risk dying. Like the stage where you get chased by a big boss saw, you have to keep up the pace, jump over platforms without falling into the green lava. A slip and you die instantly. Eventually you may move on in the game, but me personally had to practice a few times before I could do it properly. This game has a couple of extreme scenes, just look at these animations. Corpses exploding, severed heads and blood splattering from the throat. And that's just the beginning of the game! Hmm. Rated T. Let's see what it means. May contain violence, yeah. That's probably the least you can say about this game. I do not like to be put down on the ground. If the enemy hurts you, you risk falling. It gives your opponents the opportunity to reduce your health pool properly. Simply because you cannot get up and continue to attack. In fights like these, I want action that flows well. I do not want to be interrupted and wish I had been challenged in some other way than falling to the ground. We have seen it before, but it is worth pointing out again. Yeah, Castlevania. We have seen it in Super Metroid and recently in Blaster Master Zero 3. In this game, you can also do wall jumps. Seems to be a popular mechanic to apply in many 2D games, but the jumping technique feels pretty okay in this game. You do not have to time each jump with millimeter precision. You can jump from wall to wall and choose to slide a bit if you want. I could throw in a number of Castlevania references in this review, but I think it's pretty obvious. The game has a lot in common with games from the Castlevania series. Take a closer look at the graphics. Tombstones, a coffin, falling death spikes, hmm, who sleeps in a coffin? And in the text at the beginning, yeah, that's right, vampires. But since we never get to see new Castlevania games, I think it's always equally appreciated with games that follow a similar theme. One thing that can be very useful is to collect the red skulls. If you find 5 of them, you get a choice. Either a larger health pool or more ammunition. I choose to expand my health pool, but taking more ammo can pay off because ranged attacks are strong and do a lot of damage. Check out this shot. It lowers 4 enemies to the ground at the same time. However, it is easy to run out of ammo, so an expanded ammunition stockpile can be a good idea. The graphics are quite varied. The game takes place in an environment that really fits the game's theme with vampires and bloodsuckers. It is like running around in Dracula's castle, and there are some graphic highlights. Like it gets darker and darker the further into the game you get. I really like this moon. It is iconic for games of this type. I'm just waiting for the werewolves to come to life. It is quite nice when playing in a shaded world. You only see the silhouette of yourself and your enemies. It looks great and a cool graphic idea. But it will be really buried when you enter the halls. This is a part of the game that really stands out. Which means that the game is never perceived as monotonous. This 
is one of the most silly things I have ever seen in a game, probably. Jump trampoline on death spikes. Well, it will lead to a certain death, but still, it looks ridiculous. After a while you take the shape of a bird. Of course, the walls are filled with death spikes and other things that can be harmful. In my opinion, it feels good to do something other than slaughter monsters all the time. Although the bird stage is relatively short, it creates an extra dimension to the game and makes it more interesting. Late into the game you get the opportunity to change shape to bird permanently. It will be necessary to play as a bird to complete certain courses. The bird can be a little tricky to control, but after a while it feels pretty good. It has a couple of different skills that you have to master, for example using dash to get past difficult places. The bosses are cool. The crab puncher is the first boss you meet and although I think it gives a terrifying impression, it is quite easy to eliminate. You meet the same boss at a later time, it is a little chaotic, just look at this. Blood sucking flies in the air, punk soldiers, rotating blades, green slime and rocks falling from a height. There are many mechanics to keep track of and it can be important to soak up some life from time to time so you do not die. What is entertaining is that you usually have to figure out how the boss works, what to watch out for and how to hurt your opponent. The Crimson Demon, an enemy who is bathed in blood, is not very difficult to get rid of but I think the game developers have been creative using different graphic perspectives. You get a little surprised because it differs from how the rest of the game works. I think it shows that the game can be of high quality, that the bosses are interesting, you look forward to going into battle, it is fun. Eventually you reach Kagan, and it is a rather annoying boss. At first I thought it was frustrating that some of the boss's attacks seemed impossible to avoid, but after a while I understood when to attack and when to stay away. The courses are quite short, but are action packed to the brim. In the beginning you fight mostly against the same type of enemies, but after a while you have to watch out for saw wheels, cannons, crazy ladies and so on. The variety and the high tempo mean that the game never gets boring. I think I set a new record in dying in one place several times over. You need to pogo jump on small flies while avoiding saw blades. Finally, after trying again and again, I came over to a safe plateau, but pretty soon more enemies arrive. And whatever you do, do not die here, because then you have to redo the pogo jump part again. See this part? Looks easy right? Well. It isn't. I died so many times that I started to see green. Moving platforms, disappearing platforms, flying missiles, men throwing bombs and green lava. There are many things you have to take into account when you get past this part. But that's what makes the game fun. Hack and slash, bosses, fighting silhouettes, playing as a bird and jumping stages. It is a whole that makes the game entertaining. See that guy? He dies when I press the bottom. Perfect, now I can use the corpse as a plateau to get over the green lava. The game is a nice mix of gameplay and small cutscenes. There are no long stories where you have to go through an entire movie to get ahead in the game. Usually it is just a couple of quick comments and then it's back to fighting. Although this is a remake, I think older fans will probably recognize themselves. The game is challenging even though you play at standard difficulty. You also have access to different skills that make fights fun. If you want to buy this game you can do so in the Nintendo eShop. It is also available for several other consoles and PC. Please subscribe to my channel for future reviews and more. Have a good day. Bye.